Hey, what's going on, guys? Let's try these problems right here. The first question is asking, what is the Gaussian surface? And here we have the choices. The first says a closed surface in three-dimensional space through which the flux of a vector field is calculated. And then the second one is an open surface with this one and closed surface with this one and the open surface with this one. And from these statements, we know these two are not going to be true, right? Because Gaussian surface is always about closed surface. So this is talking about open surface. So these two are not true. Now let's look at these two right here. A closed surface in three dimensional space through which the flux of a vector field is calculated. A closed surface in three dimensional space through which the direction of the, we are not calculating the direction, we are calculating the flux, right? So this is the first one is correct, this is wrong. So the answer for this one is going to be the first one. Now let's look at this one. Doubling the dimension of a box will double the total amount of flux. So double, no matter how many ch times you change the dimension, it's not going to change anything, right? So doubling the dimension is not going to change anything to the flux, right? So this is false. Now let's look at this third question. Third question is asking, two concentric conducting spherical cells produce a radially outward electric field of magnitude 50,450 newton per coulomb at a point 4.25 meter from the center of the shells. The outer surface of the larger shell has a radius of 3.58 meter. If the inner shell contains an excess charge of negative 5.3 micro coulomb, find the charge on the outer shell in units micro coulomb. Okay, so here the question is asking to find the charge on the outer shell. But in order to do, do this question, you have to know the Gauss law. Gauss law says that electric flux outside of an enclosed volume is related to net enclosed charge. So here the equation that is related to this one is going to be integral EDA. So I'm doing this third part, third question. Integral EDA should be equal to Q enclosed over epsilon naught. So this is the equation. Now let's look at this one. This is same as E surface area and Q enclosed, Q enclosed over epsilon naught. And we know that for surface area for a spherical shape is going to be 4 phi r square. So E times 4 phi r square is going to be equal to Q enclosed over epsilon naught. And if you rearrange this equation, that's going to be E is equal to Q enclosed over epsilon naught 4 phi r square and uh, if you remember 1 over 4 phi epsilon naught is equal to k so instead of writing like this we can just write e is equal to k q enclosed over r square now let's plug the values k is 9 times 10 to the power of 9 and uh, Q enclosed, so this is just addition of the charges and we are trying to find uh, outer, outer charge in the outer shell, charge in the outer shell and let's say that is Q plus minus 5 times, 5.3 times 10 to the power of minus 6 because the charge is provided. This is uh, on the inner shell, right? 5.3 times 10 to the power of minus 6 over the distance from the center. So here they, they have mentioned 4.25 from the center of the shells. So that's the one we are going to use. This is going to be 4.25 square and that's going to be equal to electric field and electric field also given 50,450 newton per coulomb. Now all you have to do is just rearrange the equation and find the final answer. Now let's continue this one right here and uh, this is going to be equal to, I avoid the unit for now because if I put unit, I have to put it by everything. Okay, now 50,450 multiplied by this radius that is 4.25 square divided by 9 times 10 to the power of 9 is equal to Q minus because plus or minus plus minus mean that's going to be changed into minus 
5.3 times 10 to the power of minus 6. Now, if you calculate this one, you will get you will definitely get an answer that's that will be in 10 to the power of minus 9. That will be 101250 times 10 to the power of minus 9. But if you convert this one into 10 to the power of minus 6, it's easy because you can add them, right? So if you convert this one into 10 to the power of minus 6, it's going to be 101.25 times 10 to the power of minus 6. And also, I can bring this one to this side, this 5.3 to this side, that's going to be plus 5.3 times 10 to the power of minus 6 equal to Q. And if you add both of them, that's going to give you Q is equal to 106.55 times 10 to the power of minus 6 Coulomb. This is equal to 106.55 micro Coulomb. And that's going to be our final answer for this question. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.